Welcome all and especially our beloved Classic users to this video series in which we'll discuss where the Classic panels have migrated to in HyperMesh's next generation interface and hopefully address the number one question we get, where's my panels? The specific versions we'll be referring to 2019 Classic and 2023 Next Generation. And in this particular video, which will kick off the series, I'll be talking about some of the introductory items such as installation, launching, profile selection, and in general, the user uh, layout. And basically where all of these different sections such as the file dropdowns, the top toolbars, browsers, site toolbars, bottom toolbars, and so forth, uh, have migrated to in the next uh, generation interface. So let's go and get started. If you go over to our Altair Connect, uh, which is connect.altair.com, and you filter out uh, by desktop, you'll see now that there's two separate installations for our pre-post processor. Our uh, next generation, simply called Desktop 2023, and our uh, classic interface, which is 2022.3. Okay, so that's the first one. Uh, next, if we go over to simply launching uh, the software, Whenever we launch uh, the classic interface, uh, which is titled here HyperMesh, which would be HyperMesh Desktop as a shortcut, uh, we'll get our user profile and we can go ahead and select that. So that's the first one. When we go to launch our HyperMesh 2023, we will get uh, this user selection will be the first thing that gets popped up. And we can select our client, we can select our profile, our directory, as well as any recent files. And we go ahead and create that session. And when we do that, we'll go ahead and get our uh, HyperMesh 2023 launched. And from here, uh, we can go ahead and get started. So starting from our drop-down menus, uh, some of that has changed here in the new interface. Our file, edit, view, and HyperMesh are still drop-down. So if you create a new file, open files, want to do changing of your profile, converting, saving, screen capturing, uh, a lot of that's still available here. A couple of the new ones would be our help is located here, as well as our preferences and licensing. If we go to view, this is contain uh, some really Im important browsers that everyone should uh, was likely familiar with, such as our solver browser, entity state, our ever popular mask browser, as well as our TCL command window. Uh, many of those engineering solution profiles have now been uh, ported over to what we call are these ribbons. So if we go ahead and load our aerospace ribbon here, it'll populate our, in this case, a drop down uh, toolbox. But after that, uh, all of these now are ribbon based workflows. So let's go ahead and proceed on uh, again with now the top toolbar. A lot of those icons were uh, new file, open file, save, uh, import, export. Again, all that's available th through our file drop down here simply, as well as just dragging and dropping in uh, your FEM or CAD into this interface. Next would be our pages in the top toolbar of Classic. That's all located here in the upper hand corner. Here we have an untitled page and we can go ahead and add as many pages as we like. We could right click and rename it as well. So here I'm on the third page and we can go ahead and split that window. And whichever has the orientation cube is active. I could sync those windows as well as scroll through them and also manage them from the session browser. For our visualization, a lot of that is handled either through the keyboard or mouse. So if I zoom in here with my scroll wheel, if I hit F on the keyboard, that's our fit. We have all of our principal views down here in our visualization. Top, bottom, isometric. Holding down the scroll wheel allows you to rotate the model about the general center. If I click on the model and rotate, it'll rotate about that point. Hit F to fit again. Right click to pan. On our orientation cube, we have our incremental rotation. If you just simply hover over it. And all of these views you can save here with this little camera. For our screen capturing, again, that's in our file dropdown. Screen capture, 
we do advanced capture, image to clipboard, image to file, video to file. Our undo redo is simply holding control Z to undo something, control Y to redo something. Uh, something else that wasn't as apparent in the classic interface as it is now is the find functionality, which is you could do control F and it'll pop up in this little search. But here we have this little nice little magnifying glass to search for things such as, um, and this is by the name of the tool that you found in classic. So if you remember the name such as faces, uh, it's pretty straightforward to just type that in and look through the variety that are available. Working our way over to the model browser, uh, quite a few of those functionalities have been kind of uh, mi you know, migrated. Uh, we still have the kind of the browser layout here. We could still search for functions. If we want a dedicated view, so right now we're just simply in the model view. If we want like a component view, we just double click to open our dedicated browser. If we want property view, we click on properties to get our property browser. You can see the visualization updates, our selector as well. And if we go into say our components, this is where we have the options now to toggle on and off our surfaces or elements. If we want to toggle all surfaces or all elements, uh, that'll be located here. Show all elements, all loads. If there's geometry in the model, there'd be an option for that. This, this uh, does not have that. For selecting, of individual components or elements or properties. We have our kind of a brand new feature, uh, which is our entity selector based on the types of entities in the model. So maybe I want to select a component, right click, isolate, show all. So this is also how we can kind of select an individual part, have it highlighted in the browser, right click, make current, all that's done through our entity selector now. Uh, much of the functionality of the Mozilla browser still works the same. You can still create entities from here. Uh, some uh, An option that you might want to turn on if we go to our preferences in our browsers is the show entities in model and subsystems. Turn that on and you'll be able to get to the classic feel in the model browser where we can in interrogate individual components and review their properties in the entity editor. Looking at our side toolbar now, we have some popular uh, masking tools and other visualization capabilities. You can also launch our masking tab as well as use our entity selector. So again, if we select a component, you can say isolate, click A on the keyboard to show all, change our entity selector to elements, select some elements, click H on the keyboard or right click and say hide. So a lot of that masking functionality is, is taken care of there. If we want to find an entity, we can do it through our little uh, binoculars here, find entities. If we want to renumber something, uh, that might be a little bit more tricky. So let's use that control F, say renumber, and it'll take us to the assembly, to the tool, and even start the tool for us. And here we can renumber our entities. All of our visualizations, uh, such as shrinking of elements, showing of points, and these are geometric points, uh, showing element text, the handles or the load text, load handles um, are all available through here. Our scale, which you see here, is an option that we can turn on in our preferences. Again, a nice convenient search functionality, show scale. Now migrating down to our uh, bottom toolbar, if we want to change the client, that's simply done through our drop down here, hypermesh, hyperview, hypergraph, all of them are still available here. Creation and organization is done through our dedicated tabs, our dedicated browsers, components, properties. So if I wanted to create another property, I could do that here. You could do your renaming and, and filling out of the properties. Deleting of elements uh, or other types of entities uh, is done through our entity selector. So we go back to model. We will do a component. Click C on the keyboard, grab a component, simply hit delete on the keyboard or right click and delete. Uh, that allows us to easily delete different entities. 
if I want to card edit, I can do that as well. So let me bring everything back. Maybe I want to card edit this load. So click load, select, right click, and here we'll have our card edit. Or simply just editing of the load. If we want to organize that load, maybe we'll create a new load collector. I'm going to go ahead and select this load, right click, organize, or click O on the keyboard, and we can move that to our new destination. Organize being located in the assembly ribbon. For our visualization, uh, all that functionality is located down here in this lower ribbon. And we can shade, transparency, wireframe, uh, surfaces, and geom uh, mesh. Here we can show Wendy visualization, uh, shell thickness visualization, composite visualization, and a lot of those common, such as element quality, thickness, uh, mappability would all be located here. One that's pretty handy is that little LCD screen uh, in the classic interface. Uh, that we can go to our topology, stitch, and we can see we have our free, shared, suppressed junction, and we can isolate and visualize these. And then last but not least on the lower ribbon is our favorite icon, a little star. There we have um, a custom ribbon that we can create. So I'll call it my tools. And any of the tools that you see in the ribbon can be dragged and dropped. So maybe mesh controls into my tools. Maybe we want to then do our mesh rebuild because you want to build a particular workflow for maybe mesh editing review and you can store it there we can right click and export and save it for other sessions and other colleagues in the lower very bottom we have our status and our collector uh, kind of active collector selection uh, all of your status is still going to be updated here in the lower left corner and if we right click here we actually have a selection of what you know collectors that we want to have active if we click on any of these we can quickly change those all right so that should cover all the different items for migration from 2019 to hypermesh 2023 in the new interface and also for additional tips and tricks continue to check out our youtube channel post some additional questions to our community and also sign up for free virtual trainings. And you're always welcome to reach out to us at hwsupport at altair.com. Thank you. Take care.